People keep asking us if we're back, and we haven't really had an answer. But now, yeah, I'm thinking we're back. <laughs> welcome, <laughs> well, welcome everybody. <laughs> Oh my god, the excitement on your face to deliver those lines. Look, it, it, it occurred to me in the shower this morning, I was mm. like, we got that line right there, we oh, might, might as line. well start with it. But should we just drop the actual line? <laughs> and right on cue, right by on, the way, for the listeners, is a, a siren ringing out in the distance. Yes. Oh we, my we, god. We, we, didn't do, we didn't move or do anything. <laughs> yeah. Crime is afoot. We're recording uh, in, in the, the same city. place. Uh, As the we podcast. won't always be, but um, anyway, we're back. Uh, yeah. It's been it's been many months. Uh, the Hartnet boys are here <laughs> again. Um, the heartthrobs, exactly. Uh, we've got thick Pwillums, and fat then, Matt, and large round Jake. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and big fat gross Jake. Jo- jo- jocular? No, jocular Jake. What's I'll like take. a jelly like? Like jelly Jake? Jelly like Jake? No, <laughs> I, I want no. That's I, I Jake, Jake with jelly like insides. Jake Jake with gelatinous jelly insides. Jake. Gelatinous Jake. Yeah. I just want to be. I just want to be. It's Jake. <laughs> like it's Pat. Yeah, yeah, but it's Jake means everything's good. Everything's good. everything is a okay. Yeah. It's Jake. It's no, Jake. How, it's more like you're the Jakes, like a bathroom. You know, like the old term for a bathroom, the Jakes. The, no, you mean. Like the John? Yeah, but there's also the Jakes, right? I've never, I've never heard, that, heard before. that I've heard crapper. Guys, yeah. guys, your food is Our here. Our food's okay. here. <laughs> we're getting food. Oh, wait. <laughs> we're, we're doing a Keanu Reeves podcast, and we're coming with an appetite. Should we start this over? No, this is funny. <laughs> Listen, we we didn't, we came back, we're older, we're wiser, we definitely know how to do a podcast. Uh, we didn't get interrupted because of the Taiwanese food that we want to eat. Is I'm it? still married. I didn't get a divorce. <laughs> yeah, it's great because it's like we, we you know, all the, our listeners definitely don't watch any of the videos. Yeah, and so they had no idea what's been going on with us. They definitely <laughs> don't follow us on like Twitter or Instagram. Well, so for they, all they know, we've been dead. They certainly yeah. don't know that Jake's still married. Yeah. Well, I guess you could make an educated guess. You but. could look at you in any recent video and be like, "Oh, he's got a ring on his finger." So yeah, married. but what if that's like. A toto, a memento to his dece- to deceased wife. That's possible. Oh <laughs> when you're like, that's the only one I'll never. That is know. possible. Yeah, that's it. This yeah. is like a chastity ring now. Yeah. So anyway, we're we're back. I'm just Hello. looking up this Jake's thing real quick though. Sure. And um and this <laughs> is this is sort of an episode zero uh slash a a kind of transition yeah. episode into uh you know welcoming everyone back, all you listeners who hopefully have not deserted us. Yeah. Because if you have, we will never forgive you. We know who all of you are. We have your IP addresses. Uh, we won't explain how we have them, but we have them. <laughs> we definitely, we have them. So, Hold on. Okay, well, Jake's doing that. Jake's, a term for an outhouse that dates back to Shakespeare, though Jake's don't carry with them any guarantee of privacy from relentless teenage would-be employers. I don't know what that is. That's a true grip vocabulary from timeout.com. Uh, I believe it. Yeah. Also, isn't it kind of wild that uh, that th- the word John can mean uh, toilet and also mean a client of a prostitute? Oh, I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, just Jane and John, John were like the placeholder names for like any human being, right? Like also, John Doe. Also, just the English language is dumb. Yeah, it is kind of weird. Well, it, you know, it's a it's a Frankenstein monster of. Or the melting pot, whatever, however you want to say it. But yeah. it's, it's just dumb and, and doesn't make any sense. But we're back. Uh, hello. So we've been gone for a while. We finished the entire filmography of Josh Hartnett. We now probably know more about Josh Hartnett than most people on Earth. <laughs> we, uh, I mean... That I, is true. That's I think, objectively true. I think true. the number of people who have seen the amount of Josh Hartnett starring motion pictures... Uh, is is pretty small, and we are among them. I, we're probably outside of a Josh's close friends and family, and the psychotic fans, like yeah. the true creepy fans. We're next. We're directly I think you're right. next. We're definitely in an elect group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's he, very small. Here's a question: Do you think Josh himself has seen everything he's been in? Yes. I kind of no, I kind of <laughs> doubt it. I bet there is something that he appeared in that he was like, I don't need to see that. Yeah, 
There's a lot of actors. The question is, have we seen more Josh Hartnett projects than Josh Hartnett himself? Mm. Do we know more about Josh than Josh knows about himself? <laughs> you know what? Well, These are questions level. we would ask if Josh ever came on the show. And as I'm sure you guys are already aware, Josh has not has not come on the show. He but okay. in the meantime, we're going to play hard to get by turning our shoulder on him and choosing a new fave. Looking back at a new immortal man. Yeah. By the way, this is part of a larger ongoing series we're doing called The Immortal Ones, The Ageless Ones. This is like a big... What mini series project? Who's the next guy we're gonna do? Just about ageless L- men, like white, me- white, attractive white men with patchy facial hair who don't age much. No, not yep. necessarily. Just people that ain't aging. Yeah, but I can't think. Yeah. But now and that you you led me to that moment where I could have said something funny or good, and I don't know anybody else. Paul Rudd. Paul, oh, Rudd, Paul and, Rudd. And I would suggest we do a Paul Rudd podcast after this one called Rudd Fuckers. <laughs> Because yeah, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> and I definitely was sitting on that. <laughs> Is that was that all for that joke? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! I just wanted to say, run you just fuckers. let us hang in the air so you could do your joke, Jake. But I, then I, I respect, respect that. Thank you. That I was a good joke. I respect the hell out of that. Jake. Yeah, yeah. And I do, I do think that this overarching podcast of Ageless Men would eventually turn into a larger conspiracy theory we've been formulating about vampires that do live among us. <laughs> right. <laughs> what an evolution that would that be. That would be cool. Also, I just like the, the overarching title being The Ageless Men Podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, no, no, make it a little bit <laughs> more like, you know, like cool sound. Just call it The Ageless Ones. That would be the miniseries. The oh, Ageless Ones. that's definitely more like vampiric. Too. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's a good call. So the show is back in a new form. What was once We Heart Heart It is now Can't Get Enough of Keanu. Oh, yeah. A podcast all about the filmography of the only famous Keanu that I think anyone knows. Yes. Which the is, one. The only. We, I mean, he played the one. And that was he the joke. is the one. Yeah. It was I wasn't the, the joke. Uh, <laughs> I oh, definitely for real? didn't even think about that. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, Jesus. Wow. We're like, rust. We're just, listen, we're oiling the joints. We're blowing the dust off of some yeah, we're uh, shaking parts off those, of our brain. This yeah. is cast cobwebs. This yeah. is part of why we're doing this episode zero, because we have not all podcasted Humble together. Humble beginnings. Since, <laughs> yeah. uh, since, like, was it November? Honestly, the, thing is, the truth is, I haven't really talked to you guys since then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What have or you been just up continuously to? been on random other podcasts yourself while me and Jake just sort of sit like two <laughs> neglected toys on the shelf? <laughs> <laughs> We're like that penguin in Toy Story too. Yeah. Squeaky or Wheezy? What's I'm his that name? fucked Wheezy. up baby Wheezy, on yeah. the on the Connect spider head. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Body. <laughs> yeah, that's like the best toy in the whole series. On, wait, okay. Here's a question: If you yeah. were a Toy Story toy, which would would you be? Preference or just which one feels no, no, right no, no. for us? To which be? one is you? Which one is me? Yeah, no, I just um, said the baby. But is that mm. is that which one you want to be, or is that really you? Because well, you said which one's us, and I'm trying to be honest, and it's that broken baby that still is kind deep down, even though it scares people with its exterior. And actually, it, and it, does, it doesn't talk, and it doesn't talk. Yeah, which I'm disproving now, but most of them don't. Or that duck. Remember that duck oh, thing too? Oh, the muscle too? duck? That's, that the swing. muscle duck. You just want to yeah, be yeah. one of Sid's toys. Yeah, you I am one of Sid's toys to- is all I'm trying to say, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm mm. clearly Lotso Hug and Bear, or Lotso Hugs. Yeah, <laughs> and Jake's Rex. Because I'm going to destroy you all. I'll, I'll accept Rex, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Rex is good. Right. Wallace Shawn, yeah. I get to have his voice. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. nice. <laughs> that is cool. Playwright, Wallace Shawn. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean he's, he's a lovable one. Yeah. And uh, this I is- don't want to use my head! Is that a good wall shot? That, that was uh, uh, amazing. It's better than it, I'm going to even try and do. Since I'm the one wearing the headphones, it hurt my ears. Uh, also, it was, it was a great dinner with Andre <laughs> that night. We had steak, and and I came o- I came away with a lot to think about. I was on top of these. How do you do one? <laughs> you know, it was it was a lot easier to figure out which Powerpuff Girls we were than which uh, which Toy Story. Toy Story. Toy Story. Yeah. You know what, listeners, sound off in uh, uh, on social media. Tell us, uh, tell us which Toy Story toys we are. But anyway, yeah. um, and all you listeners, you're all the aliens. You're just sheeple that follow the claw, which is us. <laughs> Speaking of Toy Story 2, no. Keanu's going to be in that. Toy, yeah, Keanu's going to be in 4. Toy Story 4. No, 2, T-O-O. Speaking of Toy Story oh, 2. I, thought you were, I was like, what? Also, is, what? Keanu yeah. Reeves is going to be in the fourth one. <laughs> right. Yeah. At this point now, having sort of 
both inhabited and floated outside of his career in some sort of meta way. Yeah. Uh, which will be interesting to talk about at l- length <laughs> in the in the show that will soon be arriving into your ear holes, which is Can't Get Enough of Keanu. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so I think we should talk about why we're doing this. Like, why Keanu? Because people have speculated for a long, for months and months. There have been right. so many guesses. And some of you might be disappointed. We're doing Keanu, uh, which not many people guessed, much to my surprise. If you did, I don't know who you are, but I know, <laughs> I, I know a couple people on Twitter like three months ago, you know, did say Keanu, because it's like a... He's a guy with an interesting career. Yeah. But the question is, why Keanu? I have my reason. Because I I presented the idea of Keanu. Yeah. Right. So you definitely have your reasons. Once you presented the idea, I had to think about why Keanu was interesting to me. Yeah. Yeah. And so for me, it, it I thought of Keanu through Josh. Right. Because, you know, we talked a lot about Josh's career and the choices he made mm-hmm. and his attributes as an actor. And... um. And a thing that I kept realizing is that he has similar attributes to Keanu Reeves. Yeah. And Keanu is a guy who has, his career has, you know, remained uh, at like a pretty high level from like the late 80s until today. Yeah, it's had its ups and downs, but never, um, Josh's uh, troughs were always a lot deeper (laughs) than Keanu's. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And Keanu was always very selective about yeah. his projects. And I feel like he is a guy who understands his attributes and knows how to, like, what movies he will fit best into and uh, what roles are best for him. Just, like, like he knows how he... He's very aware of how he functions as an actor. Yeah. And um, and I think he's kind of, like, a mo- the model for, like, that Josh should, should have been and should now still kind of, uh, like, model his choices on. Yeah. And so... And that was it. And then, you know, I thought of that... Because I was just, I realized the comparison and I started thinking about Keanu's career and how interesting it is. He, again, a guy who kind of jumped to prominent roles in movies pretty quickly, not right. as fast as Josh, because Josh was like lightning fast. And Keanu's a little bit older. Oh, I mean, he's, he's a, he's, he's a full he's decade. In, he's in his fifties. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, uh, but even in the eighties, you know, he, he got to prominent roles in movies pretty quickly. Yeah. It, it didn't take many projects. And then, and it has such a massive variety of stuff. You know, you've got like like Bill and Ted to Dracula to Point Break to My Own Private Little Idaho Buddha. to Much Ado About Nothing <laughs> to A to Scanner Darkly Speed. Oh, yeah, uh, okay. Dangerously uh, Sorry, I'm jumping to, around now. Dangerously Isn't. I was about to say all before the Matrix. Oh, sorry. And, um, and then yes, I ruined it. God, oh, Jake. God, there was a and, theme. Yeah, and uh, but there's there, there's such a variety of stuff, yeah. and you know, and we like variety. That's yeah. part of. Pi- the reason we picked Josh was because we were like, oh, wow, look at all the stuff this guy's in. Yeah, Let's talk about him. It's funny. Keanu's one of those guys, too, that you wouldn't expect, like, whatever preconceived notions you have about him. He's a surprise. He, t- he takes bigger risks than I would have thought as far as the types of projects. And I never quite realized that until we were just looking through all of the movies that he's been in. Yeah. And, like, he's worked with a lot of strange directors. Yeah. You know? And more than... Josh Hartnett ever got Keanu Reeves. I was always sort of like pigeonholed a little bit as like this wooden, super limited actor in I a think lot of ways. When we were so younger you as think, well, yeah. especially like when we're in like high school and college, at least I remember this a lot. Like so many people, also I knew like people who do like theater stuff, and they were so ready to just like slap like Keanu with, with the bad actor yeah. label. Like that guy's yeah. bad at acting. He's wooden. He yeah. doesn't have range. And um, and I feel like uh, the narrative has changed over the years, and like Keanu, like right now, is just in general way more respected than mm-hmm. he might have been in like the early two thousands, yeah, and stuff like that. And uh, and it, w- what I think is has always been so interesting about him is how he is an actor who does have a limited range. Yeah, you know, right. like if you like, don't give him an accent. Yeah, well, that was yeah, I was sure. about to Don't say give Josh like, an accent either. It, there's, there's that as like a almost you know an aspersion cast on his, on his importance or like role as a as a like Hollywood actor. Mm-hmm. But he also does have a pretty limited range. The key, like you were saying, the difference between like him and Josh Hardnett is that. Um, yeah, he was able to like recognize the limits within himself and like use that to his advantage to like fully 
fully like actualize his strengths. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like, like within his Which range, is tougher to almost do. no one can do what he does as well as him. Mm-hmm. Like again, and we're gonna talk about this. It's very hard to imagine anyone else in the matrix. And yet yeah. so many other people were almost in the matrix. You know, yeah. you know, this is not like going to lead to any sort of discussion, but do you know who I thought of because of like, cause like, what aside from the matrix i would say that like bill and ted is probably the other thing most people know and like uh you're you're getting into a thing that i i i have a whole take on well okay we don't have to do it all i'm saying is that the only other person i can think of is a. Uh, uh, Sean Penn as Spicoli. Yeah. And like uh, forever holding Spicoli down. You both yeah. play like kind of Cali bros who are like, whoa. That's how <laughs> you became like really famous. Right. And then, you know, well, I mean, Sean Penn became deadly serious. <laughs> but, like uh, a, too uh, serious. While, while Keanu is returning to the role of Ted Theodore Logan uh, this yeah, year. Right. Yeah. Like almost gratefully, like, really, yeah, like Sean Penn's never going to do that. Yeah. For, for a movie that in a lot of ways spawned the strange reputation he had for being kind of like an idiot. Like people thought he was as stupid as his character Ted was in that movie for a movie that sort of like shadowed him and followed him around like that for a large part of his career. He still appreciated and pr- appreciates now that role. Oh, he yeah. doesn't. He doesn't, he doesn't like resent it or try and or has spent his entire life like Sean Penn trying to run away from it, right? Exactly. And act as if it didn't happen. You know, he Sean's loves still those movies, and he likes. I mean, why is he doing a third one now? You know, I mean, right. Sh- Sean Penn's famously a, a dick. Like he's famously at yes. least like a sort of like who also grading, uh, tied Madonna to a chair and beat her. Yes, so he was and a, a was bad friends with Chapo. El the, Chapo. El Chapo. No, he just did a piece on him, but it was a bad one. Yeah, yeah, uh, but like. Because he wants to be, um, he can't just be like an Oscar winning actor. He has to be like a serious journalist. Yeah, he wants too. to be yeah. Hunter S. Thompson as well. But like Keanu Reeves, I think another aspect to his current day respect uh, is the just the how nice and and workmanlike he is. Like that seems to be the the narrative around him, yeah. which is like he was a great guy. He works really fucking hard. Like he he tries to like you know, do the best he can with his, again, like, skill set to make the movie better, and mm-hmm. uh, he, like, helps the s- staff out. <laughs> no, like, it's consistently, I mean, it's almost like the stuff of legend now, just how nice and cool a guy Keanu is. Behind I mean, the scenes, yeah. I mean, like, just recently there was the story about when, like, his flight got stranded in, like, Northern California, right. and then he, like, you know, got, got like got a van with a bunch of other passengers like down to like LA and like someone documented the whole thing on Instagram. Like, yeah. and I mean, there's like, you know, the videos that'll every so often like go viral on Twitter of, you know, Keanu like on the subway, like giving his seat to someone. And, and, yeah. and consistently what I've heard for years is that every person like on any film crew that works with him loves him. Yeah. And he's like such a pleasure to work with. And so the reason I say this is because we have, we still, we're not going to give up trying, but we still haven't gotten Josh Hartnett on the podcast. Yeah. And Josh Josh seems seems to be a nice guy, but Keanu is like a famously nice guy. Yeah. So Keanu, we would love to talk to you. We want, we just want to get you on the podcast. If you ever want to come on, maybe you and Josh, you can come on. (laughs) Oh, Keanu, you can come on the show and just talk about Josh Hartnett's career and vice versa. Um, But Keanu, we'd love to have you on the show. And the other thing I wanted to say about Keanu, maybe the last thing, because we should, this is episode zero. We should wrap it up. Yeah. Is the reason I think this is the right time to do a Keanu Reeves podcast is because, in my opinion, there are three defining roles of Keanu's career, and they are the only three roles that he has uh, returned to, like that he's played multiple times. Right. And uh, pretty soon, he'll have played each of them three times. Yeah, this is like the Star Wars trilogy in a way. Yeah, and and they each the come trilogy from... trilogy of trilogies. Mm-hmm. Right, it, it is the Keanu trilogy. It is, uh, and they come from different chapters of his career. Early on in his career, there was, you know, Ted in Bill and Ted. <laughs> Where he's about to return to make that a trilogy. Right. Then mid career, Neo in the Matrix trilogy, and now John Wick in the John Wick trilogy. And sorry, it just made me laugh suddenly. I was realizing like Keanu Reeves, the one of the most famous actors on the planet, his three most career defining roles, Ted, one, and John. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're also forgetting Neo's actual first name. Uh, Thomas. Th- yeah. Tommy and John. <laughs> 
Tom, John, <laughs> Ted, 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 Tommy, John. <laughs> Just regular jo- guys. Yeah, about to say the Joe. most regular. Yeah. yeah, and so and uh, as as anyone who's seen the maybe the movie's out by now. I don't know. In the trailer to John Wick Chapter Three, Parabellum. Don't forget that I had to Google what that was, and it turns out it's a gun. A parabellum? Parabellum is like a gun. Oh, really? Cool. Yeah, it's like a machine gun that you can get. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> Maybe on the dark. I had web no or idea. I don't know. But in definitely uh, in the dark web. But in John Wick Chapter Three, he quotes one of Neo's most famous lines from The Matrix. Yeah. And in The Matrix, Neo quotes one of Ted's most famous lines. Yeah. Which is whoa, whoa. whoa. And so, and now it's got the, me in, saying whoa. Thinking about that, it's true. Blow my and freaking so, bean. With this is, <laughs> 2019, we have this convergence of it's a baked bean now of Keanu's iconic roles. Yeah, we have the conclusions of two of his trilogies. It's like, like this is the time. This is the time to talk about Keanu because the thing is, we can't get enough. We can't the get enough. The woe that of them. echoed through the ages. Oh. Episode Ooh. zero, the woe that echoed whoa. through the ages. Wow, that's whoa. good. Yeah, that's good. Let's use it. Let's l- stop then. Ooh. So, listeners, as you might be able to tell, because the episode should be, we'll, pro- we'll be dropping along with this one. The way we're beginning this podcast, this was Jake's idea. Oh Try, yeah, yeah, yeah. This Jake. is my idea. Jake, you wanna you wanna explain? Sure. It? Okay. So obviously, if you're fans of the Heart and podcast, we just started from film number one, but. In anticipation of the upcoming film, John Wick Chapter 3, Parabellum. Parabellum, we decided, why would we wait a year to talk about this movie that's about to come out <laughs> next month? That would be so dumb. Yeah. We're just like, oh, oh, by the way, uh, the biggest movie Keanu has been in in years, uh, we'll talk about it in 2020. Or talk about like three, three or four 80s movies, and then John Wick Chapter 3 pops in suddenly, and then go back to the 80s. It what? just seems weird. Yeah, Nonsense. So, what do you think? We're stupid? We're going to do it right. We're going to talk about Keanu in the here and now. We're going to cover the Wick trilogy. One, two, and three. And then we'd like you to take a journey with us back in time. It'll be like an, a movie at intro where it's like yeah. you see the present day and we Tarantino rewind back to the That's beginning. That's right. In media res, baby. Yeah. And we fall back to the beautiful year 1986 where Keanu... Bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, and looking like he does now, <laughs> will be starring in his film debut, <laughs> Flying. Or it has like eight different titles. This first movie, but we will go back in time. Wait, right. After, but did you say the, after? the John Wick trilogy? My We're question, doing one, two, and my three. My question though is: uh, Has Keanu ever has? Had you a t- delivered the information. So. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I try to give it gravitas, and then it just comes out jumbled. Like this podcast will be uh, recorded. Accurate. I mean, I mean, beginning where, where we are. Where does this mean we're like uh, the Breaking Bad pilot of podcasts? I think yes. so. Sure, yeah. but Why not? I, my question was: Has Keanu ever had a tail in a movie? Like an an, like, a, was he ever like an animal person? I don't know, but I don't I'm, know why I think he played bottom in a Midsummer Night's Dream. Uh, no, I know, but I just yeah. I don't know why that. I, came I mean, to, I want to see it. It was so clear. It was like Shazam, Kazam, like you know, yeah. like. Yeah. Well, I mean, he was in a Shakespeare movie that was like a year or two apart. So yeah. I'm I'm gonna just take a wild guess here and say Keanu Reeves has never had a tail. He's never in the had movie. a tail, yeah, yet. Yeah, <laughs> look, God we, willing, get him in Cats. <gasps> yes. Oh my God. Yeah, put a tail on that motherfucker. Can he sing? Santa Claus Cats? No. <laughs> no, are you not? Are you kidding? We just talked about his limited range. Hey, he plays Jellicle bass in the band cats, Dog Star. Balls. <laughs> I'm Busta for Jones. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I'm thinking I'm Cat. <laughs> People ask me if I'm Cat. And yeah, and I haven't had a chance to think about it. But yeah, <laughs> I'm thinking I'm cat. <laughs> and he's Busta for Jones. <laughs> Jellicle cats for Jellicle songs. So does Whatever. that mean he just murders all the other cats? I'm thinking I'm cat. Yeah. He bashes <laughs> Mr. Mistopheles in with that sewer grate thing that he, he flies around He fucking shoots on. Jenny Any Dots right in the face. <laughs> yeah. With a parabellum. <laughs> with a parabellum. He, he, he's the cat that loves dogs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the cat that loves, oh, he shows up with a pit bull, like <laughs> on, on, on a leash, leash but a it's like weird because it's like a weird like man that he essentially. <laughs> yeah, hey, it's listeners, Paul Giamatti for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, that would be so good. Mo- motion capture Paul Giamatti as a dog. Paul Giamatti as a mocap pit bull. Rough, 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 rough. <laughs> yeah, you know, rough. <laughs> 
Paul Giamatti, come on the show. Woof. Woof. <laughs> and that is Paul Giamatti as a pit bull. That was, if I had to say, a pretty almost artistic interpretation of oh, Paul yeah. Giamatti yeah. as a pit bull. Matt's trying to, he, Matt's like workshopping this before his SNL audition. This is his uh, impression that he's got. Hey, Warren, uh, this is Paul Giamatti as a dog. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not funny. Uh, you can't be here. Oh, you have yeah. to leave. <laughs> Um, D- listeners, didn't you miss this? Yeah, see, yeah. that was a you got a freebie Lauren impression in there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wow. So, guys, should we should you we end episode so, zero and talk about so talk quick? No, hold you on. Know. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Just the word uh, Lornographic videotape. <laughs> <laughs> I like to watch all this Lornography. Lornography. <laughs> anyway, she's Lauren Michaels. Boston. Uh, Bustopher Jones. Lauren, come on the show. (laughs) Uh, Lauren, forgive me for what I'm about to do. Wait, is there a Cats (laughs) porn parody? (laughs) Oh, there's got to be. Or or if there isn't, there will be after the movie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Bustopher Jones, come on. Hopefully motion capture, though. (laughs) <laughs> yeah don't With you want like that being you know but like also like cats. like really really cheap bad cgi i'd you know, rather it be people like in shitty costumes the way like the simpsons porn parody is like <laughs> mortifying yeah. it's like so scary. i saw the trailer and it freaked me out too yeah. much well come on i mean cats lends itself we were just talking about this off mic i mean jellical cats that's genital cats Genital yeah. songs for genital cats. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Buster it, for Jones stays the same. Guys, Most it, of the cats' names. It, it writes same. itself. Yeah, the rum tum tugger. We all know what he's tugging. <laughs> rum tum tugger. I mean, this the stuff is so crazy. Rumple teaser. We all know what he's teasing. Rumple teaser. I mean, Wait, you made that up. No, rumple teaser is a real. real cat. Yeah, it's Whoa. it's. Pat, I, how, I'm not making this up. How is all this of a, the cats' names are, are can be sexual innuendo wise? I saw a, a production yes. of this like a, years and years ago, and I think I blocked it all out of my mind. Oh, it was really? one of my first it's, Broadway shows, and I was so scared when the the people come up into the audience as cats, yeah, yeah. adults, and I'm just like, I was like seven, <laughs> just like a full a grown man, like meow, and like looking at me with like contact lenses in his eyes, and I was so scared. <laughs> Wet my pants in the. Cat but that's show. why we need to distract ourselves by talking about Keanu Reeves, which we will if you stay tuned. Yes. So everybody, uh, buckle up. It's going to be quite the ride. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I, I, I let me rephrase that. Um, uh, buckle your seatbelt, Dorothy, because Kansas is going bye bye. Yeah. Because right, the Matrix. Yes. Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> Take the take the red pill with us. <laughs> yeah, you're uh, gonna you're gonna get based in red pilled for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so we Ow. we've got a long journey ahead of us. It's gonna be fun, and unlike the Josh one, it's not gonna have a sharp drop off into movies nobody's ever heard of. No, yeah, it's gonna be a smoldering blaze that keeps everyone warm for years to come. Josh, we love you. Come on the show, yeah, please. So anyway, we're gonna record. Uh, the the John Wick episode right now. So. I am out of energy. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, wait. Did we have a sign off for for Hartnett? No, not really. We'll, we'll figure. It's been one so out. long. We just said bye. <laughs> yeah, bye. we'll we'll work on it. Yep. All right. All right. Bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. bye.